Um, you're not gonna be able to do much about that now. There is a YouTube link on the website that that'll work for anyone. Um, in order to fix that, you'd have to end this meeting and restart it. Um, it, you'll have to end it, go into your, well, give me a call. Okay, I, thought I, I thought I did that. So let me stop sharing. And we will just let everybody know here. Apologize, we're going to try and... You shut the door, Isabella, please. Please. <laughs> down for just a second we're gonna end it we're gonna change the setting and we're gonna have you re-log in so i um, apologize for that bear with us we're gonna shut this down for one minute and have you re-log in getting in that's good All right, Mr. Oliveira, can you make me a co-host since I made you the host? Thank you very much. And we're going to give it a couple more minutes. Um, I didn't uncheck a box. I thought I had, but I didn't, which locked most people out. So hopefully they get here. And we will record this for uh, for 
folks that they weren't able to come. Recording in progress. Okay, so we'll get we'll get rolling here. Um, and again, I apologize for that setting. And so hopefully most people can join us. Um, my name is Jim Monty. I'm the principal at Arcata High School. Welcome. We appreciate you coming tonight. We are recording this so that if you know of a family or friend that uh, couldn't get in, um, it will be on our website along with a lot of the stuff we'll show you so that you can um, direct them to families. I see some... Uh, administrators in the room as well. So if you have uh, students who want to uh, get the information, it will be on our website and we'll show you that before the evening's out. So, you know, Arcata High um, uses the acronym RISE. And so uh, we like to say we rise for academics, together we rise. And so for academics, what we're looking for is these are the, what we expect students to learn be respectful and responsible, independent and collaborative, seekers of knowledge, and engaged and effective communicators. And that's woven throughout our classes. We've had these for a couple of years. And in the, this year, um, Lori Meadows has helped us uh, formulate and develop uh, our norms. So we've been going over our norms and kind of reinforcing them throughout everything we do. And again, the RISE stands for respectful, inclusive, safe, and engaged. And I think if I could tell you one thing about Arcata High, it would be that Arcata is an inclusive school. We, we get students from all over the county. Um, we probably have a couple of hundred students on inter-districts that we'll talk about and a couple of hundred on intra-districts, which means they live out of the Arcata area. So um, as we go through this process, I think what you'll find is Arcata High is very diverse in the kinds of students that come here and they come for all kinds of reasons. And I, I'm confident we, we do a good job. We could always do a little bit better, but we do a really good job in supporting students and, and meeting their needs. And that's why I think we have um, such a good uh, amount of students coming and, and wanting to come to Arcata High. So um, the rise is something that you'll hear uh, from your, your student as they progress through Arcata High. So. Um, Matt Dussel, are you here? Didn't look on there. I thought I saw you. Right, let's see if I see Matt. There he is. He's here. Matt. There we go. Yeah. So Matt, I'm going to pull up our uh, our slideshow for athletics if I can get there.
Or is that on there now? Looks good. Hi, Hi everybody. My, my name is Matt Dussel. I am the athletic director here at Arcata High. I am also a special education teacher. I teach math and science elements. And I'm also attending this meeting as a parent, as my oldest daughter. Uh, she'll be attending Arcata High starting next year. So here's our, here's our athletics. Welcome to Arcata High School. We, uh, we, offer, we offer everything. Um, there it is. So right now we're in our winter season. We have basketball going mostly full force. Um, looking good there. Basketball, wrestling, and cheer for the basketball. Um, next season is spring. Starting in early February, we offer, we offer track, baseball, softball, boys tennis, boys golf, and swimming. And our fall season, which starts uh, before school starts, they start practice up. August 8th is the first day of practices. Uh, we offer football and volleyball, cross country, girls tennis, and cheerleading, girls golf, and soccer. Uh, we had a really successful fall season. Uh, lots of first places all down the list there. Um, great student athletes, for, you know, first place football, volleyball, tennis, uh, soccer, had some good playoff runs. Uh, it's been real successful. Um, we've had little challenges with win our winter games um, with COVID with uh, some basketball games being rescheduled. But things are looking up. Seems like we're going to get more games in as as COVID cases go down, um, and we're looking good there. Matt, do you want to share any new news off the press about basketball? Mm -hmm. Basketball is the hot topic. Um, as too. of the last couple of weeks, we, as many of you may know, we have not been allowing spectators at any of our basketball games. Um, you know, just, just the players and the refs and coaches, uh, somebody running the scoreboard and, and such. So uh, we got some new news today. It's good news. Um, each student athlete is going to be allowed four guests into the game. Um, there months. will four guests. They'll be able to uh, invite the, you know, there are four people that they want to come watch. We will be clearing the gym in between games. Uh, which means, you know, after the freshman game is done, um, people will be asked to leave the gym and the JV fans will come in and watch. And the same thing will happen after the JV game, games. Those people will leave and the varsity um, will come in. And that's just to keep everything as safe as possibly can. Um, obviously, we'll be fully masked in the gym. Um, no concessions at this time. I think we're deciding uh, until things calm down a little bit but it's great news you know pe you know it's rough not being able to watch your student play their sport so uh, we got good news today we're all happy about it um so hopefully moving forward that you know things will smooth out and, and open up for uh, spectators to watch the games and that'll that'll start monday right matt the 23rd that starts, yeah. that starts monday yeah and we're gonna coming still up. try and stream some of our events just for the people who can't be there so hopefully we can get both of them in there and the streaming has gone well so if you can't make it um you can always you can always watch the stream the live stream or even after the game you can watch and, and we'll talk a lot more about inter and inter districts but with athletics um it, it does come into play and there's some extra paperwork at times when people transfer schools move into the district uh, not so much as ninth graders um, but if you come from another school in the middle of the season or in between school years, uh, between nine and 12, uh, there's extra paperwork. And so uh, that's something that Matt needs to do and, and is on top of it. We appreciate him for that. Uh, but the big deadline is, and we're going to say this multiple times, is the inter and inter districts, you need to get them in by February 1st. And we'll go over that again multiple times. So um, thanks, Matt. Uh, fall sports. Fall sports. So big thing here, starting August 8th. So before school starts, obviously, um, 
students need to have their physical and their athletic packet turned into the school in the office before they can try out for anything. So start thinking about, you know, those physicals in the summer and get those got to be done. They got to be turned in before they can participate or even try out for, um, for any sports. Um, cheer tryouts usually in May. So that's even before beforehand and football usually gets going right around right around that time August 8th uh, I believe and we also will have cross country and girls golf girls tennis cheer which we mentioned and soccer and volleyball so uh, these are all the sports that happen in the fall and they all start before school starts so if you're if your student is interested in these sports uh, you know make sure you don't wait and um and be looking, yeah, get your physicals in. Um, be aware of, you know, practice tryout times uh, during the end of the summer. And, and we ask uh, that you do your physicals, you, you know, sometime near the end of the school year and in the summer, just because they're only good for one year. And if it lapses in the middle of the year, you know, we need to have that physical run the school year. So best time to get a physical, if you can schedule it now for, um, after school in that summer months, that'll cover a whole, whatever season you want to play or your child's going to participate in. And then if you have any questions, here's Matt's contact information. And again, that'll be up on the website as well. Um, so thank you, Matt. Thanks. All right. I just wanted to kind of share this. Nick Parker is a student. And he's been documenting the progress on the lower field. And so we really appreciate, you know, the taxpayers who came up with bond money and allowed us to finally, after years and years, it's been a project at Arcata High to put a track in um, probably for 30 plus years. And so we finally have it going down there. Uh, it's, it's just been terrific. We hope that it opens up soon. They're in the final uh, stages. There's a couple of things to get checked off, but it'll give us facilities for soccer, track, uh, football practice, baseball playing down there. Um, so, and then of course, all of our PE classes. So we're just really excited. And this is, uh, if you go to a site and ask, uh, Nick Parker has been posting this. He's a baseball player senior, and he's done a terrific job documenting. There's a lot of videos on his Facebook page. And so you can just kind of see uh, what he's documented throughout the year years, it's been over a year that they've been working on this. So th that's great. Okay. Um, I see a hand up question. Diane? Yeah, hi, good night. Um, yeah, I was wondering if in the future you guys are gonna offer tennis for boys or is this just for girls all throughout the year? Tennis for boys would be in the spring and golf for boys would be in the spring. So they kind of offset because we have limited facilities. So one plays in the fall and the other plays in the spring. So we offer them both. Great question. Okay. See if I can do this. So, right, I, and I'm gonna go, Pretty quick, um, this is not meant to be a sales pitch, it's just an informational pitch. And I think the key stuff that we need to get tonight is how do I get registration material? Who do I ask if I have questions? And that, that's what we wanna be here for. But again, Arcata High, we believe we have an excellent ac academic program. We run a lot of AP classes in a lot of subjects. So if that's an interest of your child, uh, we've got you covered. We do dual enrollment classes, uh, College of the Redwoods, uh, other college courses can be taken as well. So um, we have varying degrees of academic for a variety of students. And let's see if I can. Okay. We talked about the Arcata Arts Institute. It's a program Ann Bound Crawford started years ago at Arcata High, and it's a model for around the state. And so people have come over the years. I've been here 10 years, and they tour our facilities. Um, and right now, Johanna Morrow and her staff do a terrific job with the Arcata Arts Institute. And 
giving students an opportunity to expand on their uh, art and career educational aspirations. Some of the classes, you know, in the fine arts program, we've got a photography art class, basic uh, art, drama, and then game design. And so you'll see students take one of these classes and then go into the Arcade Arts Institute to further specialize. RMAC uh, music, we run choir and magical classes. We've got orchestra and jazz band. Orchestra runs zero period before school. It's fairly popular. So um, a lot of our students take that so that they can still take the other classes they want to, but um, zero period for orchestra it's before school. The Arcade Art Institute uh, has various strands. So music, theater, media arts, and visual arts. And so what students do is they get paired up with uh, somebody from the community who comes in and a master teacher. Somebody is actually doing it day to day. And so they get just a different look, a different voice and more experience. So uh, it's a great way to specialize and just get more involved in uh, that part of their education. Um, we've had great success. Jason Seidel has developed the uh, Design Institute, IDI, and he runs the Makers class, computer programming, game design. And these classes have uh, been full the last couple of years. And so very popular, very creative, hands-on classes. And so a lot of problem solving and critical thinking involved in there as well. So uh, very, very popular. So it's something that you want to um, have your student explore. He's done videos, I believe, on the website. And so you can check those out. But um, great class, PTE class for technical education, along with our standard woodshop metal shop classes. Uh, Mr. Roan does a terrific job there. Uh, with those, we've got Mr. Solomon does our auto shop at both sites, Arcata and McKinleyville. And so uh, that, those programs are hands-on. They provide students a lot of skills they can use forward in uh, educational or job pursuits. Along with culinary arts, Chef Callison has developed a program where um, we need to clone him. He's, he's got classes that are over full and more students want them than we can uh, usually schedule every year. So. He's built this program up. He runs a basic culinary class and then a, a two, three culinary class that does catering jobs as well. Um, so they get practical experience. Um, I'm gonna share with Ms. Campbell to just talk a little bit about some of the other things that we support students with. Thank you, Mr. Mondi. My name is Tanya Campbell. I'm the assistant principal here at Arcata High School. And I was a, a longtime teacher coach prior to that. And I just want to share some student supports and opportunities for your, your incoming freshmen. Um, student supports, we have a career and college center. Uh, we have crisis academic counselors. We have study skills classes if kids should need a little bit extra support. We have peer tutoring that's run in the library. Um, kids who have mastered a subject area will tutor kids who may be struggling in a subject area. We have uh, excellent special ed services, a librarian, media studies. Um, we have an on-campus nurse, uh, diversion counselors, an Indian ed program. And so we have a lot of uh, student support set in place. And the next slide here, these are just a few of the clubs that we offer at Arcata High School. As you can see, there's there's seems to be something for everybody here. And so I just really want to encourage you to encourage your students to join a club so that they feel a little bit more connected to the school and they can kind of give them an opportunity to, to kind of meet people and, and feel a little connected to the school. So those are our clubs. And then other opportunities we have is opportunities to travel. Um, our AP European history class this year, I believe, is traveling to Europe. Um, our orchestra and choir classes travel. And then again, you can see the other foreign languages and drama have all have opportunities for travel and um, uh, you know, kind of participating in things outside the classroom. 
So I just want to encourage your students to um, take a chance and join a club at meeting people so connected. Thank you all for coming also, by the way. Thanks, Tanya. And I think that, that's a big key. I mean, a lot of people say, why, why do schools promote sports so much? And one of the reasons you promote sports and clubs and all these other experiences is to get students connected. Like, get them connected to find, you know, what they're passionate about, what they enjoy. And so that, that's what we're trying to do with this, the offerings at Arcata High, is get students to find a path that they feel a little bit connected in, something that they can say, like, I'm excited about that. Doesn't always happen. Sometimes it happens early. Sometimes it happens later in high school. Sometimes it happens after high school. But um, we will work to, to provide opportunities. And those clubs that Ms. Campbell said, students are always coming up with new ideas. And uh, you get a, a teacher who is a staff member who will sponsor it and be the advisor. And so we really appreciate our staff. Um, for, so for every one of those clubs, you've got teachers putting in extra time on the back end supporting uh, th those folks. Okay. Again, we're going to play a video here for from the counseling department. And the reason to play it is you can go back to it at any time. They're here to answer questions when we're done. Um, but it talks about, again, Arcata High, you're here, you're choosing Arcata High, we appreciate it. And those of you on inner or inner districts, um, we will make sure that you know where that information is as well tonight. So let me get to that video and then we will um, have one more. Welcome, Tiger Parents. The AHS counseling team looks forward to working with you and your student. We'll cover registration, course selection, info on transfers, such as intra and interdistrict transfers, and deadlines. My name is Emily Silvera, and I'm an academic counselor at Arcata High. Hi, my name is Dina Fall, and I am also an academic counselor at Arcata High. I am going to be covering the registration process. Tomorrow, your eighth graders teacher will be passing out a blue registration form and a ninth grade course request form, as well as a copy of the Arcata High School course catalog. We are asking families to complete these forms and return them to your student's eighth grade teacher no later than next Friday, January 28th. We'll be visiting all of our feeder schools to collect these forms the following week. We will now go over each of the forms. What you see on the screen right now is the registration form. It's pretty simple. We are asking for basic demogra demographic information about you and your student. The form asks for your student's cell phone number. If your student has one, please be sure to include it. Sometimes counselors need to get in touch with students over the summer to discuss their class schedules. And if we have their cell phone numbers, it makes it a whole lot easier for us to reach them. Your email is also a very important part of the registration form as Arcata High does a lot of our communication through email. So please be sure to include that. I'm now going to cover course selection. You and your student will choose six courses. Four of those courses are required courses for all freshmen, English, math, cross PE, and health technology essentials. Two of those classes are electives that you and your student get to choose. Electives depend on your student's interests and goals after high school. You'll notice in a minute when we show you the ninth grade course request form, that listed at the bottom of the form are all the courses that are open for freshmen. Here is the ninth grade course request form. So this form is a little more involved than the registration form. It may look overwhelming and this process may seem overwhelming, but we're hoping to provide you with some tips tonight that will make the process easier. So first at the top, your student will write their name and then you will select um, either yes if your student plans to take orchestra next year. If not, you'll check the no box. 
orchestra is the only class that we offer zero period. And the class starts at 7.20 a.m. So below that, you'll see we have those four courses listed that we talked about. Because all freshmen take English, a semester of health, and a semester of technology essentials, cross PE, and a math class. Let's talk about English. Most ninth graders will enroll in English 1 CP. CP stands for college prep. English 1 is for students who have had gaps in their learning or who struggle with English. Moving on to math, about 80% of our students in ninth grade start in integrated math one. We also offer math one, which is a pre-algebra class. That might be good if your student struggles in math or has fallen behind. For English and math, if you are unsure of which classes your students should take, your students' current math and English teachers are the ones who you need to talk to. They will be making recommendations for your students' English level and also your students' math level. Many eighth grade teachers will be discussing their recommendations with eighth graders over the coming weeks, but you can also reach out to your students' eighth grade teacher if you have questions. So now it's the hardest part. Um, the form asks for two electives. The classes that you and your students select will depend on their interests as well as their goals after high school. Maybe you have a student who's very academically driven. Your student may want to choose a foreign language, a fine art that meets four-year college entrance requirements, or a college prep science class. Science is another area that can be tricky, but eighth grade teachers will also be recommending which class or classes might be the best fit for your student. Please note that our biology class is a very fast-paced, rigorous course. It is open to freshmen, but if your student wants to take this class, we really recommend that you talk with your eighth grade science teacher to be sure that they feel that this is a good choice for them. So again, if your student wants to take science and you're not sure which science class would be the best fit for them, talking with their eighth grade science teacher is the way to go. So maybe your student is interested in the industrial arts or more hands-on opportunities. They might be looking at classes like metal shop, wood shop, or ag mechanics. Um, if your student likes technology, we have lots of classes in that area, such as interactive media, where they'll get to design a video game, makers, and even robotics. There are tons of electives, and really there's something for everyone. To learn more about our elective offerings, check out the Arcata High School course catalog that your student will be receiving tomorrow at school. You can read about all of the classes offered at Arcata High, as well as view high school graduation requirements and what classes students need to take if they plan to go straight to a four-year college after high school. If your student has an IEP, an Individualized Education Program, one of their electives needs to be core support and you'll want to write that on one of the elective lines. This class will give your student a period with a resource teacher who will help them in all of their classes. The last thing that is needed on the course request form is an alternate class. We do our very best to get everyone in their first choices of classes, and usually most of the time that happens, but sometimes it's just not possible. So the alternate that your student lists might be one of the elective classes that they end up with on their schedule please make sure that your student puts some thought into this class. The last thing I wanna talk about is um, that in the, the semester that your student has Tech Essentials, the counseling department will spend a week in that class um, next year where we will discuss all sorts of things with students, really just acquainting them with us, um, letting them know that what we do as counselors, how they can access us and sign up to see us. But we're also gonna talk about options after high school, such as community college, four-year college, vocational and technical schools, and career choices. Uh, we'll cover with your student graduation requirements and what is needed if your student plans to go to a four-year college directly after high school. Um, towards the end of that week, we'll spend a couple days helping students create what's called a four-year plan, where they map out the classes they plan to take in high school based on their goals after high school. The four-year plan is a really integral part of what we do as students. And we revisit it with students every year so that we can help them review and revise it 
based on their interests and goals, and as they change as they move forward. All of this information can be found on the Arcata High School website. This is what it looks like. You'll just need to press the ninth grade registration information, which will take you to this page. You'll see here uh, all of the forms that you can fill out online if you'd like. Um, if you do fill it out online, then you will not need to submit a paper copy. Uh, what is all, will also be on here is a link to videos of all of our electives that we offer at Arcata High. Please keep in mind that January 28th is the deadline for all registration and course request forms. If you filled out a paper copy, they are due to your student's eighth grade teacher. If you filled them out online, then it went directly to us. But again, the deadline is January 28th. I'm now gonna go over inter and intra district transfers. Uh, these forms are essential for inter districts. Uh, this is if you live outside of the Nohunk School District and intra districts are for those who live inside the Nohunk School District. Intra district transfers are for those who live in McKinleyville, Fieldbrook, West Haven, Trinidad, and Oric but don't live within the school, uh, the Arcata High School boundaries. Inter-district transfers are those who live outside of the district and that's south of Indianola cutoff, including Freshwater, Neyland, Eureka, any city south of Eureka, Hoopa, Burnt Ranch, and Willow Creek. The deadline for these forms is February 1st. And please keep in mind that this is a hard deadline. If you turn in a form after this deadline, your student may not be approved to attend Arcata High. So please keep in mind, inter and interdistrict forms are due February 1st. Thank you very much for your time. We welcome the class of 2026, and we look forward to working with you and your students. Go Tigers! All right, so one thing I want to make sure I don't do something dumb here. Okay, um, one, one thing we want to make sure is uh, the deadline, like Emily said, with the intern and intras, that's a hard deadline, and a lot of it is from the other school sites. So if you live in um, Eureka, you've got to hit that February 1st deadline. Otherwise, it can hold up the process. The other thing is this past year, Arcata went over a thousand students in our student body. First time in a long time that we've done that. And so at the beginning of the school year, we had to stop taking inter and inter-district transfers. In previous years, we've accepted them throughout the year, but this year we, we've not taken anybody um, you know, once the school year started. So please make sure you get your paperwork in if that's something that you're considering. Um, if you change your mind and want to go to the previous district, you can reverse that. It's just really, really hard to uh, get approved after that February 1st deadline. So if it's something you're even considering, you're not sure, put the form in. It doesn't lock you in, but it'll allow you the opportunity um, if you choose to come to our data high. So uh, we just want to make sure that, that that's up there and ready to go. So. That pretty much concludes our quick down and dirty. The big things are those those forms. This week, you know, your homework is uh, get those forms uh, from your kids out of the backpacks. Get them if you if you can't find them, they're on our website. And again, I'll just go live to our website. So they're right here. We're going to put our eighth grade parent night, but the registration is this white button. We're going to leave it up for a while. And give me a thumbs up, Tanya, if that came up on the screen. Okay, thanks, Bill. And so you can see that right here, we're going to post this recording as well. So if you want to go back and listen to it, but the student registration and the ninth grade course requests are both required. <coughs> Excuse me, COVID, sorry. And then the interdistrict and intra forms are right below. Okay. 
And then this is where we've got all the courses on video. If you want to take a look and uh, explore them a little bit more. And then at the bottom is a course catalog, written descriptions, telling you what each course meets as far as high school requirements and uh, college entrance requirements as well. So we're going to leave this up here. It should be available. If you have any questions or concerns, you know, reach out to us. We're here to answer questions and we'll be sticking around here for a little bit tonight. Um, all we need you to do is uh, raise your hand in Zoom and or uh, mic on. Uh, all right, so I've got um, Phoebe and then Michelle and then Bill, you got your hand up. So I'll go Phoebe, Michelle and then Bill. Hi there. I'm just curious, what's the the general range in class size for uh, the classes the the freshmen are are going into? Thank you. Yeah, they're they're going to range. Our our PE classes are probably between forty and forty five students as a standard PE class. When we're talking English, math, science classes, we try and hold them to no more than thirty two. Our, our math class will be pushing that 32, 33. English will probably be closer to 28, 29 if we're if we're lucky. And then the sciences will be capped right around 30. Um, they only have 32 workstations, so they're not going to go any higher. Um, tech and health probably around 32 as well would be the the max. And so I would say average class size for a freshman would be in that 25 to 30 range. Um, it's going to be hard to say because this year we had a lot of kids going independent study and we're not sure with the new requirements as far as what the state's going to require with vaccinations when that comes out if that's going to trigger more kids needing independent study so um, i would say safe bet 28 is, is a ballpark number for most classes um, i'm going to point to miss fall does that sound about right 28 Sorry, I was actually answering a question in the chat. About 20. Can you repeat what you said? Yeah, class size about 28 for freshmen for most. Yeah. I would say it's it's uh, it's not that common to have an English class that's over 30. I think this year we're right around 27, 28. We've got a couple big ones, but most of them are um, in the low 20s. We do our best, and we'll, we'll try and keep them in that range. But I, I got to say, this past year we had. 290 freshmen enroll. So that was big. That was, that was a lot of kids. Um, Michelle and then Bill. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you could talk more about the academic supports for students with IEPs or the like, and also about that course support elective course that you were you mentioned. Sure. So if your if your child has an IEP, and you we will be then uh, working with your your school site when all the registration comes in. Um, and once they're registered, we'll do a transition IEP sometime in the late spring. So sometime in end of April, May, and we'll try and sit down with each student and then um, your, your feeder school, let's say it's Sunny Bray. Sunny Bray would call us up. We set transition meetings and we try and do them every 30, 30 minutes or so. We put them back to back. And so we would sit down with you and the uh, principal or representative from Sunny Bray their resource teacher, our resource teacher, um, and maybe a counselor or an administrator, and just kind of go over the schedule at the same time. So course support is that, that uh, support class. It's like a study skills class. It covers all subjects, and it gives students with IEPs a home base. It gives them that case manager that will, will try and keep with them for the next four years so they get a relationship with somebody they can count on um, when there's a question. So. Um, only put down course support if your student currently has an IEP, and um, then we would be working with that case manager from the feeder school to transition. Okay. Um, Bill, did you have a question for me? Well, you're, you're muted still. Okay, hey, thanks. Um, I had a couple of quick questions. One is um, I'm looking at the electronic um, registration form for the ninth grade course requests. And I just had a question about those, those two English classes. There's, there's not a way to select one. So are they just gonna be put in each of those? Is that how that works? 
Yeah, that's that's a great question. So what we use the English, the English is to differentiate like where we might need to assist some students. So we try and make sure that in our schedule, we're not loading up one class. And, and before we had all the English ones in one class and that wasn't a very good, good model. So they'll be, we'll take our English one students and they'll be intermixed inside all of our English one CP classes together. And we're gonna give them additional support. So we just are trying to identify any kid that might need a little bit of extra help in English to start off with so they don't fall through the cracks. But so, the question is good is how do you how do you indicate that on a form that doesn't have a little checkbox right there? And I don't have an answer for you because typically we'd circle it. So that's that's a great point out and we'll see if we can fix that or we'll come up with a, a workaround. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and just one more quick note, I, I noticed um, it's not on this form, but I went to the link for English to watch the video and it was blocked. Just okay. FYI. Good information. We'll try and get that fixed by tomorrow. So should I just submit this form even though I can't select an English class or should I hold off? Um, I, if, if they are um, at grade level, yes, just submit it because that, that won't be a problem. If, if you have a concern, we want to probably get that note. If the student is struggling in reading, um, and is a little bit below grade level, then those are the ones that we want to make sure we are aware of so that we can provide extra support. But if you think they're grade level bill, I would just submit it and um, that, that would be that would be fine. Thank you. I, I just want to remind everyone too that if you're a feeder school, if your student is going to one of our feeder schools tomorrow, in theory, they're going to receive a paper reg form um, and an AHS course catalog. So if you're old school and you just want to fill it out on paper, um, you can totally do that. I believe, okay. All right. Um, Ms. Stewart has been, is our Dean of Students and she has been here all night on the back end helping with questions. And I'm wondering, Shelly, if there's anything that we want to share out that came up that would be good for the whole group. Yes, um, thank you. One question that came up was um, about 504 plans. So I think maybe if you just made a distinction between a 504 and an IEP, that would be great. Absolutely, okay. So an IEP um, falls under the category of special education. The 504 plan falls under general education. They both provide students with accommodation, um, extra assistance as needed in areas that are, that are designated by the, the the plan. We put our 504 students in a study skills class. So the, the title of the class is study skills. And Ms. Campbell, when she's going over some of the student supports, um, that's what we would use. It is very similar to core support, but it just has a different focus. Um, and one is you got the resource, the case manager for special ed. And it's got a couple of different, uh, different ways of running. Um, but the 504 who also needs the accommodations, we handle it with a study skills class. So um, it's a gen ed class and we put the students in there in study skills. So they're both gonna get the same accommodation, same supports, but it's just the way that we handle it at, at our kid eye. Um, so another question related to that is um, study skills, a class to register for, or is it a drop-in location? So it is absolutely a class that one registers for um, and the counselors can help decide if that's um, a, a good fit. Right. Um, and, yeah, and a teacher recommendation is always helpful to get more information. So we have these transition meetings for students with, with IEPs, but if we got more information for 504 students as well, uh, that's great to know. Um, and it's located on the registration form, but also we'd be reaching out to teachers and, and the school sites um, when students have 504s to make sure that we get that information and can transition um, to the high school as well. So um, we like to do recommendations for the study skills class. If you put it on there, we might give you a call or give the feeder school a call to um, make sure it's a good placement. One, it takes away maybe an elective that the student might wanna take like a, a shop class or a culinary class or an art class. Um, and two, um, we try and reserve it, it's limited seating and so we want to just make sure that we support the students that absolutely need it 
And so um, study skills, you can put it on there, but we're going to do a little bit of screening to make sure it's the appropriate fit. Yes, exactly. Not all students with 504s take a study skill class, but many, many do. Um, let's see. There was a question. I think um, the counselors have been amazing answering in the chat um, some of these questions, but um, freshmen taking AP. So AP is for um, juniors and seniors. There is honors for sophomores. Our school does not offer an honors for freshmen. I believe McKinleyville does, but but we um, we do not. Um, the next question, um, actually, yeah. yeah. I would say the only the only AP I've seen a freshman take um, is uh, computer programming. Like I believe if they have the math skills and they need them, I think computer programming is the only one I've seen um, available to, to freshmen. So thank you. And back up toward the top, I haven't forgotten about you. Um, average percentage of grads that matriculate to four-year colleges. That might be a counselor question. <laughs> yeah, I think off the top of my head, I would I would say just over 50% go straight to a four year and then another large percentage go to a two year but uh, well Emily you're on mic so okay. maybe you've looked at this before yeah so I actually went to our school profile and pulled up the data on that um, it is based on pre-pandemic numbers so class of 2019 2020 um, so I put it in the chat here um, so, uh, again, based on pre-pandemic data, 41.2% planned to attend four-year university and 42.2% planned to attend a two-year, so community college. I think the important thing to remember here is that our students are still thinking about higher education, whether it's four-year university or on to community college or trade school. Um, they are thinking about being lifelong learners and um, being uh, trying to better themselves, really. So. Yeah. And, and CR has done a terrific job working with the local high schools and HSU. I mean, getting, getting students into the four year. Um, they're, they're both terrific programs. And um, speaking as a dad who's got three kids who are in college, two in college, one graduated. Um, the one who went to the four year right away cost me a whole hell of a lot more money than the one who went to the two year. So they're, they're all getting great education but we've got a large amount of people going um, and taking college courses after high school. So that, that's great to see. Um, Ms. Stewart, I'm gonna hold off. If you gather a couple more questions, we're gonna go to Little Bird and then Bryson. Hi there, um, this is Jessica, Little Bird. Uh, I was curious about, my son lives in two different households and I want to fill out a registration form and inter district transfer, and I'm sure his father will too. I'm wondering if we can get them sent to us. Do we call the school? Um, how would that work? So the inter district forms are on our website, and you can you can just download them. Um, if a student lives in two households, if one household is Arcata and one is Eureka. And the, and the student goes back and forth between the two households, you do not need to fill out any form because one of the households is in Arcata. If the student lives in Eureka and McKinleyville, the two households, then you're gonna have to fill out one of those forms. My recommendation is fill out the intra because it's within our district. And um, so you can use either residence if the student lives in both residences. If okay. The student only lives in one residence primarily, you're going to use that one resident. But yeah, you can use either or both addresses. Okay. I don't have a printer, was why I wanted a physical form. But got it. Got it. So if you want to um, email the school here, we can um, see about getting your form. And I, yes, they're at the school. So we can, oh. if you stop by, we can, we can have a form for you. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Bryson? Hi, thanks. Um, I just wanted to clarify the term feeder school. Is sure. that an inter-district school or an intra-district schools? So, so our feeder schools are, are the ones that are in Arcata. So the ones that um, come right to Arcata, starting go Blue Lake, Pacific Union, Jacoby Creek, and um, Sunny Bray Middle School. 
Okay. Those are our main feeder schools. Fieldbrook, the school is on the north end. It's 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 past the dividing line between Arcata and McKinleyville. So they feed into McKinleyville. McKinleyville Middle, Trinidad, Oric, Big Lagoon, all of those feed into the McKinleyville High School. And then anything south of Indianola is Eureka or another district south. So we really just have a couple of schools that feed Arcata. Um, and the three primary are Jacoby Creek, Sunny Bray, and um, Pacific Union, and then along with Blue Lake. Um, those would be our main feeder schools. We have a couple others. Peninsula is in our district um, out on, on the spit. And then uh, there's a couple of smaller schools that, that would feed us. Um, Bill, you're smiling at Greenpoint is out with us. They're not over the hill. So anything um, on this side of wherever the dividing line is on probably Titlow Hill um, west, we get and east, we go to Klamath Trinity. So, yeah. And again, if you're not sure where it is, the ads that have been running on about inter, inter, inter districts, if you go to the HCOE County website, they have a district locator where you can look up your address and it'll tell you what, it'll give you a, a point as to where, where you should be thinking as far as the school district. Um, and if you're unsure, give us a, give us a call, we'll help you out. But um, it's a good resource at the district uh, HCOE website. Ms. I just Stewart? wanted to hop on really okay. quick and talk about Spanish. There's yep. been a few questions in the chat about um, placing higher than Spanish one. Um, and that's definitely an option. I know um, a lot of our uh, eighth grade schools offer Spanish programs. So if your student maybe was at Fuente Nueva and had intensive Spanish, or maybe they're taking Spanish at, I know Jacoby Creek and um, Sunny Bray have a program, um, you can definitely um, look into testing, your student testing into another level. And I'm just thinking it might be best if you funnel those requests to one of us so I'm gonna put my email in the chat. Um, so what I think would be best is if that's your student, if you think your student would like to try to test into a higher level of Spanish, go ahead and register for Spanish one on the form. That's the only option, but then shoot me an email with your student's name um, and just a little, a little blurb. My student would like, so, I, so it reminds me, my student would like to test into a higher level and I'll work with our Spanish teacher and try to set that up for you. Usually those um, assessments take place the week after school gets out but um, we didn't, I don't think we did them last year because of COVID. So um, we might be doing it a little bit differently. So if you're interested in that, I'm gonna put my email in the chat for Spanish assessment and just feel free to um, email me your students info. I could be wrong, but I think between Emily, Dina and you, Mr. Manji, that we've got the questions answered. If I am wrong, feel free to raise your hand, open your mic. Um, so I, I've got one that I saw. So the question on where to turn in an inter-district or an intra-district. So the inter-district goes to the school that you're closest to. So if you live in Eureka, you're going to fill out that paperwork and get it to Eureka City Schools by February 1st. If you live in Fortuna, it goes to Fortuna High. If you live up in Hoopa, it goes to Hoopa High School. If you live, that's the inter-district. So that's people living out south of Indianola and then you know west of, east of Titlow Hill, primarily. If you're filling out an intra-district, what you can do is drop it off at our district office in McKinleyville. They're on the corner of uh, Murray and uh, McKinleyville Avenue. And so they can be sent to our district office and those are the intras. So those are the people living in probably Fieldbrook, McKinleyville, Trinidad, Oric. Um, so you're asking to come down across the Mad River to Arcata. Those would go to the Northern Humboldt district office. And so the, the, the question is going to be, um, I, would, I would not give the inter or inter-district to your feeder school. I would get them right to 
the school of residence. So whether it's Eureka High, Fortuna, or the district office in McKinleyville, because if, if you give it to your feeder school and it ends up in a pile and it gets to the, the other place after February 1st, um, it's a, it could cause a problem. So make sure that you take it. Don't, don't rely on your school to get it there. Um, please take it to the appropriate school um, yourself so that you know it, it happened and you can make sure that you've got your paperwork in on time. And the question um, that follows that is, when do they expect to hear whether or not that's been approved? So my, my thinking is when, if you live in Eureka and you turn it in by February 1st, after February 1st, Eureka gathers them all. And I believe they have 10 days or a, a window, approximately 10 days where they will go through them all. And then they'll start notifying people at the end of that 10 day period. So within the first couple of weeks, after you should get notified of your status on the interdistrict form. Um, same thing with our intras. It could be a little bit longer because you're already signed up in one of our schools in our district, but we should have that um, fairly quickly so you would know um, before March 1st. If you don't find out a couple of weeks, then give either our district office a call if you turned it in there or give um, the school that you turned it into a call. So. It should be turned around within the first couple of weeks um, is my, my understanding. So if somebody else has, I've got a couple of principals in the room. So if you've got different information, let me know. But um, that's my understanding. Katie, you got your hand up? Yeah, so I'm wondering if my student wants uh, to go to a UC, should she or always take those UC classes? Um, does that does it should require to do that for all four years or options now need to have that UC within them? I'm gonna get Ms. Silvera ready to answer that. I am. Thank you. Um, so what you're referring to is um, the A through G requirements. Um, a through G is basically a list instead of numbers, they use letters and they have outlined specific classes that they consider to be college prep for students to be ready for University. Right. This is for both the UC and CSU system. So if your student is wanting to go to a UC, it's important that they follow the guidelines that we laid out in the course catalog. Um, the UC and CSU have a lot of similarities to the requirements for application eligibility. Um, however, the UC does recommend some extra um, classes, such as a third year of a foreign language, a fourth year of math, etc. So if she's going for a UC, it's really important that she follow those guidelines. So choosing those UC classes right away and only choosing those ones, not college ones that don't. Prep. So college prep classes um, or A through G classes, it is possible for her to meet all of the A through G requirements and take classes that are not college prep. Okay, yeah, because she was interested in doing metal, but that's not a UC class. So like, how important would that be that she do only the UC can, classes for the whole time? Right. She can totally do metal and still meet A through G requirements. Okay, great. Got it. Thank you. Okay, so a couple questions I'll pick up real quick. Um, student has an IEP, but might not need that level of support. Um, do they need to register for a core class? The answer is yes. We're going to have them register and then um, sometime in their freshman year, if it becomes apparent that they can, it, it's workable that they don't need that support, we'll address that in an IEP meeting. But we would register them for a core class um, if they had an IEP and they need that level of support um, to start off with. And then um, do ninth graders take a history class? No, we don't have history for ninth graders at this time. Oh, um, Shelly, others, oh, they answered that. I think, um, I think we got it. Okay. okay. Well, we'll be hanging around for a little bit longer if you want to. I appreciate everyone coming. And um, if you know people that didn't have the opportunity, and I've got some principals in the room, and, um, let them know that it will be posted online so they can go to it and, and check it out. It'll be on our website and we'll leave it up for all of February. Melanie, go ahead. 
Jim, when, <clears throat> excuse me. When do you think the recording will go up? I'll send it out to our families. We'll try and get that up by the end of tomorrow. All right. Thank yeah. you. And um, let's see, Mr. Oliveira behind the scenes real quick. Um, Jim, is that doable by tomorrow? Yes, and, def definitely. And is there another, did we get it at another place? You were talking about having it on a, a stream or a Google site or we'll, we'll just have the recording. Oh, there'll be a link to the recording. Perfect, okay, thank you so much, Jim. Um, go ahead, Michelle. Sorry, I couldn't get off mute. Um, <laughs> not to um, keep asking about the intra-district transfer, but if we sure. submit it online, I imagine it goes to where it needs to, so I don't need to do anything else, right? Okay. Uh, it, it should, yes. I would, when, did, when you submit it, give them a call. <laughs> be, okay. Be that, be that squeaky wheel a couple of days later and say, hey, I submitted it um, on Friday. I'm just checking that you got it. Great. Okay. Uh, Thank you. It should follow through, I would hope. I've got a question about sports. Is that something that we signed up for online too? Or is that somewhere else? No, sports, just when we start our season of sport, there'll be information that goes home. So for the fall sport, we'll send a mailing, a postcard, letting everybody know when the season starts, um, when tryouts are, and so that you get all the dates that you would need to um, get in touch with the coach, show up, get all that information. And so you're saying that comes in the physical mail? We've been doing that. We could email it as well, but yeah. It, in some way, we've, we've been doing postcards because people like to put them on the refrigerator. And so we, we do both, put them on our website, email them, physical mail. Okay, great. Yeah, I think that email is a good idea for sure. Yep. And so you just email everybody about all the sports opportunities as they're coming up? Um, they'll be, they're, they're set on our, on our website. And so, yeah, they, and we put them in the bulletin. And so we try and get the word out. Coaches are always, before the season starts, recruiting and getting people to try out. And so they put information that's for meetings. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for this awesome meeting and all the information. No problem. There you go, Miss Campbell. We've taught archery in the past. Depends on. Depends on how. Depends on the student mix in PE. How brave you are. <laughs> We've had zero injuries in archery. Yeah. For, it's it's like a three week unit, right? Yep. Okay. Okay, I'm I'm gonna butcher the name. Hale is the last name. So I'm it's, gonna, it's Enoch. That's not it, it, this is his wife. I'm sorry. It's fine. I wasn't uh, to be close. I know you said your district. No, Blue Lake comes right to Arcata. So okay. So Blue, is the deadline the same though? Uh, you would just need to get the registration paperwork in. There's no right. intra needed for Blue Lake. So, right, okay. Got yeah, you. we could get the, the registration material back to Blue Lake by the 28th. That would be great. 28th, okay. Thank yeah. you. Okay. The library. Like the end of Ferris Bueller when he comes out and says, go, go, go home. <laughs> Movie's over. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> um, if you're also registering for Six Rivers, yes, do, do a registration for both Six Rivers. If they have more students apply than slots available, they will do a lottery. And when Mr. Perry does the lottery, he lets us know. So yes, do a do a application for both and then um, maybe note on there that you've applied to both and we'll take care of it. Um, 
Paper registration forms delivered to either Pacific Union, Jacoby Creek, Sunny Bray, or Blue Lake. Um, if you are not at one of those schools, I would turn them into our Kata High director. Shannon, you'll do the course request form for our Kata High. I don't believe Six Rivers has one of those. So you just fill out the registration paperwork for Six Rivers. But for us, you'll do the registration paperwork and the ninth grade course request form. Yeah, and I think once they're admitted, then Mr. Perry takes care of courses. Thank you for all the, all the wonderful information. Good night. Thank Good night. You. Have a great night. Thank Hi, you so Jackie. much. Hi, Dina. So Hi. excited for Winston to come to Arcata High. I forgot there was another Stratton. Yeah. I'm really I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Jim. You Have a wonderful night, everybody. Okay. Um, you can either hand deliver or mail in the registration forms to Arcata High if you'd like. We'll take them either way. I had uh, one more question again about the English. There were two different Englishes that you can yeah. sign your kid up for. Is that correct? Yes. What are so, the two different ones? And I missed that. I'm sorry. Primarily, um, most kids are going to sign up for English 1 CP, the college prep English. We just okay. need to know if, if your child struggles with reading or writing anything that they're below grade level. We want to make sure we provide extra support. So we're just trying to identify them by distinguishing between the two levels. But currently, they will all be in a classroom together. And then we would just make sure that we are aware of certain students that we want to make sure we provide that support. OK, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. That's a great question, Dina. Did you talk to Michelle Camilli about them getting their birth certificate vaccination information? I didn't. I, I mean, if they're coming from a theater school, we don't need any of that. So if you're coming from, yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess if you're coming, I mean, eventually we would get their file if they're coming from MPA or outside of the district. So, but no, I Michelle and I haven't talked about that at all. Yeah, but I but, think just the registration information online will get us started. Okay, yeah, I think so too. And then we'll gather those things later. Yeah. Good question. Okay, well, Ms. Fall, Ms. Silvera, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate that time. And I'm sure there'll be other questions, but we'll get them to you. And we appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Have a good night. Thank you, Ms. Stewart, for getting all those questions. Mr. Oliveira, I appreciate it. Running the show. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and turn off the recording, Tim. We'll just turn off the recording first and recording stop. Campbell, Ms. Stewart, thank you so much. We'll see you at a ball game next week. If not soon. <gasps> or in a few hours. All right. I'm logging off. Good night, everybody. Okay. Take care. So Thanks, Tim. Um, yeah, no, I, I just want to talk for a second and just say if, if you send me the recording um, or send it to Michelle, we'll put it up on the on the website page tomorrow. So thank you.
and you can go ahead and end this all. Thank you all for coming. Good night, Tim.